Uh, everybody, uh, welcome Larry Baker, even though you can't see him, uh, but he can hear you, and presumably the other way around. Larry, you can't, you can't see them, but there's close to 350 people here. Um, so, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, in fact, well, we, were, we were told by Bill Irvine just a few minutes ago that this is probably the largest gathering of Stoics ever. Uh. Likely because Stoics didn't like well, it. Yeah. Well, I just want to say hello to everybody, and uh, including Peter Stankiewicz from Warsaw, Poland, my friend, and Julia Annis, and others that I know there. So hello, and it's good to have a chance to talk with everyone. Excellent. So, uh, Larry, we have about 10 or 15 minutes, so we'll just get, get started immediately. Um, I know in your book is about stoic ethical theory primarily, but I thought I'd ask you a sort of combination of question. In your book, you've mentioned Posidonius a lot, who is one of the stoics of the middle period, who is actually not that talked about, uh, too much about. Way more than Chrysippus, for example, you mention him in, in, in your book. Why is that? Because he's more down to earth, uh, because you know, it's more plausible, more connected to putting stoic ethics into action, or what? What's going on there? Well, it's two things. Um, one is that Posidonius helped me most with the whole project, in a way, uh, because he helped me understand how the ancient Stoics disagreed with one another. They had philosophical agreements but remained Stoics. And I knew that I was going to disagree with some things uh, that some ancients said. And I wanted to remain within the Stoic tradition. So Posidonia showed me how that was possible. And of course, he helped me get a good response to common objections about Stoic emotions. Right. Now, speaking of the Stoic emotions, we've heard Juliet today talk about it a little bit. So you mean that that's the common objection that the Stoicism recommends the elimination of passions and apparently leaves us with unemotional flat existence, right? Yes, uh, that's the objection that I was thinking about. It was still pretty much alive in scholarly circles in the mid-90s when I was writing the book, less so today, I think. But Posidonius had a good to this, and I found I, I didn't really care about the Plato issue. That is, whether or not Posidonius was a real Stoic, because Ian Kidd and John Cooper had answered that as far as I could tell very well. So you don't believe he was compromising sort of the Stoic system by incorporating some of the ideas that, uh, uh, from Plato, for instance, about a tripartite soul or a faculty uh, psychology? That's right. I, I don't believe he was compromising the Stoic system. I found it's important to read those fragments of emotion in their context, in Galen. Galen was an anti-Stoic, and uh, he, he may have thought Post was compromising Stoic doctrine. But I, did, I don't read the fragments that Galen quoted in that way. I think Posidonius only point out this. Namely, that human beings cannot eliminate affective impulses, the first movements of You don't become a safe by eliminating such impulses. Those impulses are human. You don't become a sage by becoming inhuman. You become a sage by integrating your complex humanity into a unified, virtuous character. And that's not iron fisted control. It's not Freudian repression. 
it's practical wisdom in operation life. It's the translation of impulses of various sorts, perceptions, goals and dispositions of various sorts into appropriate conduct in daily life. Uh, the, conduct is wise and the middle part of what you said got definitely lost, I think, um, because the connection is catchy. So I'm going to just resummarize and repeat it briefly, and then I'll ask you the next question. So you were talking about uh, Galen, who was an anti-Stoic, uh, and Galen may have thought Posidonian was compromising Stoic doctrine, but, it, but, but Larry doesn't read that frag um, the fragments in that way. He thinks that Posidonian simply pointed out the obvious, that human beings cannot eliminate affective impulses, uh, those are the so-called first movements of emotion. You don't become a sage by eliminating the impulses. Uh, those impulses are human, so eliminating those impulses make, makes you inhuman. Uh, you don't become a sage by becoming inhuman. You become a sage by integrating your complex humanity into a unified and virtuous character. Um, this is not, therefore, sort of iron-fisted control. It's, it's not Freudian repression. It is practical wisdom in the operation of daily life. So then my next question is, uh, the question keeps coming up, however, as an objection to Stoicism in general, just even, even today, right? Uh, what, what's, um, what do you think about mm -hmm. that? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, and Posidonius continues to be a key figure in answering that question. So we should read Posidonius, really, the fragments. We should definitely do that. Um, yes. Now, uh, yeah. Read the fragments in uh, volume three of Ian Kidd's book. Now, do you have any advice about good studies of ancient sources um, for answering that sort of question? So Kidd book is, is the one? And then... Um, yes. Um, and then a book by Margaret Graper. Stoicism and Emotion, 2007. Right. Yeah, it's a wonderful book. Margaret Graver, 2007, Stoicism and Emotion. Uh, now, I hear you're preparing a second edition. I hear it because you told me uh, that you're preparing a second edition of your book. Uh, is there going to be more on this topic as in it? I think so. It isn't completely decided yet. Uh, if it is... It will be a commentary to chapter seven. Great. Well, we're looking forward to the, ne to the next edition. We do not have, unfortunately, your book for sale here because it's sold out. But, you know, that's a good reason to make a, to have a, a second Thank edition. <laughs> um, let, let's, um, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm, well, I'm, I'm just saying I'm thinking about including material on tranquility and stoic love. Stoic love. Now, that's going to be the topic of the Stoic Week uh, conference. Hey, you are. You are on video now, Larry. Everybody can see you. Well, okay. You can still see right. only me, but that's okay. Uh, uh, trust me, there are 300 and something people here. Um, okay, so Stoic love, it's going to be the topic of a Stoic Week conference coming up soon, in fact, right? So, yeah. What do you think? I read that. Yes, you heard that. <laughs> That's right. I think that's ethics in action for sure, yes. Right. But let's get back to the Stoic ethics in action. So anything more that you want to say about Stoic in action, uh, Stoic ethics in action specifically? Uh, yeah, just two things. One is a recommendation that you have the additional resources page uh, that I sent to Greg. Um, but is to look up the ethics and action section in Long and Sedley, specifically the stuff on Panitius and the four roles we must all juggle in daily life. So that's my presentation about ethics and action. And but to leave you with a problem, uh, uh, it's something that that isn't recently in my own reflections. I think there is a gap in the developmental account 
of agency that I gave and that the Stoics give. Yeah, so let's talk about... The problem this. is about how to sustain... Go ahead. How to sustain the motivation for making progress. Am I still... Is the sound still a problem? Is the sound still a problem that you're in? The sound is uh, kind of on and off, but go ahead. We'll, we'll As I said, we're stoics. We'll deal with it. Whatever it is, is. All right. Um, specifically, it's about how to sustain the necessary agentic energy that we need to continue to make progress. Um, it's about the, this is a gap in the developmental story. I think that when we're first developing practical intelligence, yeah. we are intensely energized this time. It's like when we're children and learning language and learning how to make uh, causal connections and so forth. We've got the agentic energy required to actually progress then toward competence and eventually fitness and virtuosity. But I think what we also lose some of that energy repeatedly. We begin to settle for what we have, or we get distracted, or we get intensely interested in other things. So this is where stoic moral training comes in. And we have lots of... And the ancient stoics were concerned about that. But you need agentic energy to get yourself to do the training. So let me stop you here for a second because we did lose a, a few things uh, that you said. So uh, you may have captured that he's talking, Larry's talking about what he calls agentic energy, which is this idea that when you start initially, you know, again, into stoicism, you say, oh, yeah, this is great. Let me do it. Let me practice. Let me etc., etc. Just like the first time you go to the gym, it's like, oh, this is great, I feel good. Then after a while, you know, sort of you slow down, you say, ah, oh, this is really hard, and it takes a lot of time when you're talking about energy. So you start losing motivation. So what he's talking, what he's concerned about here is about ways to get your energy back up in this, what he calls the agentic energy uh, up. Not just to practice stoicism, I suppose, but in general, because that's, that's actually a problem in general, not just for the practice of stoicism. Uh, so go ahead, sorry. Um, right, and uh, we have examples of people who have to do this for their careers. Pilots, surgeons, astronauts, right? So they have to do that repeatedly. My question is, how can Stoics do something similar? And I'm toying with an idea, but it seems too much like a joke. So I'm going to sign off, sign off here by just suggesting something. That it's uh, I'll leave. I'm thinking what we need is what pilots and astronauts have. We need a simulator, a stoic simulator, simulator. I like it. That concentrates the mind, that concentrates the mind in the way that our minds were concentrated when we were learning language and learning about stoicism. It's got to be something too real to be just a game. It needs to be an immersive experience that puts us back to the framework mind we once had when we were new to this. Something that maybe scares us into getting our agentic energy up. 
rather than calming us into tranquility and acceptance and equanimity. We need those things too. But we have a lot of exercises and meditations to help us with that. We, have, we need the opposite with respect to sustaining gentle energy. I'm imagining something like a virtual reality cockpit. Right. I was going to say, I mean, virtual reality is coming online, apparently, pretty soon. So maybe we have some programmers in the room here that can start working on a virtual reality simulator for Stoics. Whatever that looks like uh, in the end. But <laughs> Well, yes. Um, something like the flight simulate program, but more, more dangerous. I, I'm thinking that what we need is something like the astronaut to prepare for spacewalks. Right. They have something that's scary so that they have to have but Something scary but safe. Uh, Larry, we, we are well, we're actually running out of time and also okay. the, the connection keeps going on, on and off. But thank you very much for joining us today. This, this, this was great seeing you. Uh, guys, Good. Larry Baker.